Ask the Messengers TV show is a TV show that educates, informs, and entertains our viewers on public health issues such as mental illness, suicide, addiction, illness and disease, COVID-19 relief, crime, domestic violence, homelessness, human trafficking, employment opportunities, health care, and more. A former officer took it too far when a wheelchair-bound man didn't want to go to jail. This should not be your first option. This isn't your first option. And that's what he did. He made this his first option. We've seen a rise in clashes all across the country between some communities and the police. Whether during traffic stops or on the street encounters with men and women in blue, well, they've become violent at times. Today on Ask the Messengers, our guest is David Wilborn of DNL Security, who shares some important steps on the do's and the don'ts when you are pulled over by the police with our guest host, Rod Dickerson. And now, Ask the Messengers. Hello and welcome to Ask the Messenger. My name is Rod Dickerson. I am your special guest host today. Today I'll be interviewing David Wilborn. He is a deputy chief and he's also the owner of DNL Security. We're going to be talking about something very near to my heart. I want to see my young people, black, white, it doesn't really matter, but especially the people from my neighborhood, I want you to make it home. When the police stop you, there's some do's and there's some don'ts. David Wilborn is going to help us go through a list of things that we should do and things that we should not do. So we're glad to have you on Ask the Messenger. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So just right off the bat, when I, you know, when I was a child, mm -hmm. um, our parents kind of taught us what to do. Exactly. You know, they wanted to make sure we made it home. Why is there, is there such a disparity today between the children not knowing anything and, and maybe even putting themselves in a situation that can cause danger? What do you think about that? Well, it, it's a lot of things that plays in the factor nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, you know, when we were coming up, one, to be honest with you, uh, police officers, uh, men and women were respected. Uh, today's generation, today and age, they're not respected, and it's not, and it's not all on the generation. Uh, you see things now happening with police officers, and also with uh, black men and women that you didn't really see a lot back then. Where you did, but times were different. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, racism has just never left. It just changed. It just changed the course. Yeah. So back year, year, years, years ago. Uh, a, a white cop could kill a black man and nobody said nothing about it at all. You mm -hmm. know, it was just what it was. Uh, move forward a little bit. Uh, it was still being done, but um, people started to march and things like that. Mm -hmm. You bring it a little bit closer now, uh, folks just not taking it anymore. You know, they're firing back, mouthing off, you know, fighting police officers mm -hmm. and things like that when they feel or believe that uh, it's something racial, you know. So so it's a lot of respect has been lost down mm -hmm. through the years, you know, where, you know, like I said, where they have respect for officers. Now there's not much respect. And it doesn't matter if, if you feel it's racial or not. They see a badge, automatic, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's upset. So uh, with that being said, that's, that's a lot of reason why. Yeah. So what do you think? Um, so I guess that's on the, the officer side, the, mm -hmm. the police side. Well, there needs to be um, some education, some training. No, I, I, I definitely agree. So what it is nowadays, you have a lot of people, I feel, that it's like it's nothing else to do. I might as well be a cop. You know, mm. uh, you know, cops still have great benefits, you know, mm -hmm. life insurance, you know, medical, you know. Well, I can't get in over here, so I might as well go be, go be a cop. As long as you can make it through the academy, you're going to make it whether you have a knack for this line of work or not. Mm -hmm. If you make it through that academy, they're wow. going to put you on the street, you know. And, and, and so with that being said, I say that to say you have people out there who don't really have a knack for police work. So when certain things happen, even with all the training in the world, mm -hmm. when certain things happen, they don't know how to respond like they should. They react versus responding. So therefore, you get somebody being shot that shouldn't have been shot. You get uh, somebody who may get taken down or 
uh, physically abused when they shouldn't be physically abused mm -hmm. uh, in that essence. But there are times where people who do have the knack for this that understand mm -hmm. uh, how things go, you know, sometimes some things are warranted and some things aren't. Yeah, it, it seems to be um, that we've somewhat criminalized just a tra routine traffic stop. Mm -hmm. Um, when a, a police officer approaches a vehicle, now I do understand, I do understand that you don't know what's going on in that vehicle. Exactly. You don't know who's in that vehicle. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they have something that's in that vehicle. Mm -hmm. But uh, how can we get away from just automatically thinking that, well, I don't know, you know, this is really a tough question. I know it's going to be a tough answer. Mm -hmm. But there seems to be something where uh, a police officer just doesn't automatically feel as though his life is in danger when he's the one with the weapon that we definitely know of. So, so in our essence, there's never going to be a moment or a point where an officer does not feel he, mm -hmm. okay. he or she's life is in danger. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the way of the world. The two most dangerous stops or, or police runs are a traffic stop and a wow. domestic. And see, we've never been told that. Right. That's something that we're hearing for the first time, um, that this actually happens where when a police just makes a routine stop, mm -hmm. He's at risk of losing his, his or her life. Correct. So, the, so, so understand when we do a traffic stop and nothing is routine, mm -hmm. nothing is regular mm -hmm. because the only way it could be regular slash routine if I stop the same person every day over and over again. Right. And, and even with that being said, that one person can have a bad day. So where I could be stopping Mr. Johnny every single day for mm -hmm. 20 years, year 21, Mr. Johnny don't feel like getting stopped. You know, so there's nothing routine, there's nothing regular, and there's never a moment or a time where a police officer makes a stop or goes on a run and and does not have that feeling that I may not make it back from this run. Right. So, but the first thing, and just to be honest, the thing that we want to understand is respect plays a lot. Uh, it, it, it's, it's really big. Mm -hmm. And the officer versus citizen and citizen versus officer. Both parties should be respected. Mm -hmm. The first thing you want to do is if you have like tinted windows or a lot of stuff, roll your windows down. That's going to automatically give the officer a calming feeling. Okay, so they're being, you know, a mm -hmm. little okay. transparent here. You know, okay, you walk up to your car, he or she, the officer I'm speaking about, you know, does their little greeting spiel. I'm officer so-and-so. I stopped you because blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. Likes the registration proof of insurance. If you just do that, Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if your license or your registration is somewhere where you may need to reach or pull or drag, mm -hmm. you know, you know, sometimes women have, you know, bags yeah. and you got to reach or like me, I carry, I carry a backpack. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes my wallet may be in my backpack, which may be in the back seat. Hey, my wallet is back here mm -hmm. in that backpack right there to the left side. You want me to reach for it? You know, yeah. just get, let them know what it is that you're about to do. So then, but when you just go to reach in, and then, oh, whoa, what was you doing? Well, you asked me for this, so, so. Well, wait, whoa, I didn't know you had to reach. Most people may not have it there. You know, mm -hmm. maybe in a place where you may not have to do too much reaching. So, so that's one of the things that, that they have to do. And I notice now, you know, now, as soon as an officer pulls a citizen over and they get to the vehicle, the citizen, it's nine times out of 10, sometimes, automatically just starts a hollering match because they're upset because they got pulled over. Mm. And well, hold that thought mm -hmm. right there. So you're getting into a lot of the do's and don'ts mm -hmm. and specific things that we should do mm -hmm. as citizens when we're pulled over by the police. We'll be right back with more of Ask the Messenger. <laughs> Would you like to help us save lives? You can do so by partnering with us here at Ask the Messengers by making a donation of any amount. The people in your communities need your support. Help us extend our reach and impact more lives. Supporting our organization is as easy as a click of a button. Just visit our site shown on the screen from your phone or computer where you will see a yellow donation button. Ask the Messengers is waiting on your partnership and your community is waiting on you. And we're back once again with David Wilborn right here on Ask the Messenger. He's going to give us, he's getting ready to give us some of the do's and don'ts, things that we should do as citizens when we are pulled over 
um, in a traffic stop. And once again, it's not routine. So we need to quit saying a routine right. <laughs> traffic right. stop, right? right. right. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and give us some of those things that, as one, I know you mentioned that number one, we shouldn't be raising our voice. Correct. Number two, if we do have our license and registration in an area like a backpack mm-hmm. in the back seat, we should let the officer know. Exactly. And I think number three, you said, especially if we have tinted windows, mm-hmm. just roll the windows just down. Just roll them down. Okay, go ahead. Just roll them. And the one thing you want to do, please stay in your vehicle. Do not hop out as soon as the officer push you over, that is is going to go all bad at that point. The officer is going to get agitated, upset, you know, please get back in the vehicle. Do not, that's the first, do not mm-hmm. just pull over, roll your one, roll your window down, and, and just wait till the officer comes and approaches the vehicle. Um, I, I do understand that you could be upset. I mean, nobody wants to get pulled over. Right. I, I mean, I, I get it. Even even when you run a red light or you run a stop sign, you still don't want to get pulled over. Even when you know you did mm-hmm. what you did was was wrong. But yet, that's their job. They're going to do what they're supposed to do. And nine times out of ten, and nobody wants to get a ticket either. But right. hey, this type of stuff happens. That's what the courts are for. If you feel like you were wronged, mm-hmm. if you feel like uh, the officer didn't see what they thought they saw, okay, fine, not a big deal. Go to court. Let the court handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now today, you know, so many things happen on traffic stops where where now people are ended up shot, people are ended up dead, when all you would have ended up with was a traffic ticket. Wow. That's it. Mm-hmm. And whatever traffic ticket you had, nine times out of ten, the courts are offering plea deals where if you got mm-hmm. ten tickets, mm-hmm. they'll say just plead guilty and we'll take it down to impeding traffic with no points. Just go pay the fine. You know, so sometimes we, we let things get so out of control, out of emotion. Yeah. And it's not always citizens' fault. I will say mm-hmm. that. So sometimes as citizens, too, we need to recognize to let cooler heads prevail. How do we prevent our children from being killed? Uh, well, number one, be, be respectful, be cooperative, uh, keep your hands visible. You know, putting your hands up never hurts. Detective Fountain says it's vital for the community to know the law. The judges might say ignorance of the law is no excuse. The fact that you didn't know is not going to uh, cut you any uh, slack when you go to court. Are you fearful of the police at all? I sometimes because, you know, it's some good cops and then it's some bad ones. So you just don't know what to expect. I just know that I have to address them a certain type of way. How do you know that? My parents taught me. We asked community police officer Baron Coleman and two of our employees to help us demonstrate three scenarios that could get you in trouble during a traffic stop. First, mouthing off. How you doing, ma'am? I was doing so much better before you stopped me. Second, don't reach for anything without permission. Keep your hands on the wheel until told otherwise. Sir, don't move. Don't move. I need to see a license, your registration, proof of insurance, please. And third, never get combative with an officer. So many images on TV where young ladies and young men end up on the ground. When she jerks away from you, is that an absolute no-no? Never jerk away from the police. You're being escorted or you're being detained. You're not going to win on that situation. You're, go- you're definitely going to be arrested. Now, I know this is probably off the subject a little bit, mm-hmm. but you mentioned something that I got to probe about. You said they can work out a deal, usually. Mm-hmm. You know, as citizens, I mean, I've even, everybody, I guess, is that have experienced a traffic stop right. at some point in their life. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's all about the money. Because mm-hmm. when you mention that, you know, they can lower it down, so all you got to mm-hmm. do is just pay the fine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you plead guilty, mm-hmm. and they are lowered down to impeding. That kind of feels funny, too. Well, yes, it, it, it can, but even still, mm-hmm. you have a right to fight your ticket. Yeah. That's just an option. Mm-hmm. So you have a right to say, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I thought I'm, I, I really feel like I was done wrong or, you know, I don't feel like I deserve this. So yeah. you have every right to say, nope, I want to talk to the judge yeah. and talk to the judge. That's right. Well, we're going to come right back again. We've got a quick commercial break again. We'll be right back with Ask the Messenger. we got David Wilborn. He's telling us what we need to hear. We'll be right back. Would you like to help us save lives? You can do so by partnering with us here at Ask the Messengers by making a donation of any amount. The people in your communities need your support. Help us extend our reach and impact more lives. Supporting our organization is as easy as a click of a button. Just visit our site shown on the screen from your phone or computer where you will see a yellow donation button. 
Ask the Messengers is waiting on your partnership, and your community is waiting on you. There's a mindset, you mentioned this in the earlier part of our interview. Mm -hmm. There's a mindset of our young people, I, and it just seems to be sprung on through social media, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of acting out. Uh, mm -hmm. So how can we, um, you know, actually pull our children aside, our young men and women, mm -hmm. and let them know we want you to come home alive? So I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of things that happen here and on the streets mm -hmm. with, young, with our younger generation because they think they can do certain things that they see on social media. Right. And I'm telling you all, please stop that. Um, if I, I can think of so many different shootings where police officers shot people and everybody always wants to deal with the officer didn't have to shoot them. And I get it. I mm -hmm. understand it. Yeah. But let's deal with what led up to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you were being arrested, and you were going with the arrest. Nobody was being disrespectful to right. you. You were going to handcuffs, going to the back of the car. But you decided to do something different. And because you decided to do something different, you got shot. We got to deal with that first. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we have to deal with if a police officer is if giving you a lawful order and you just choose not to do it, you want to try and fight a cop, you, we, we're doing real not intelligent things here. Yeah. It's, it's not, and it's always going to end bad for the citizen. Mm -hmm. It's always going to end bad for the young person. Because especially if a cop says, well, I'm sorry, you know, we got to take you to jail. You're going. Now, how you get there determines on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be easy if you just got to go, go with it. Because cuffs, cuffs go on and they come off. You know, everybody forgets this can be worked out. Mm -hmm. This is no longer, and, I, and I, I have to say this, this is no longer where people just go to jail and you never see it here from again. Right. No, families coming down to the police station, they got signs, they marching. Mm -hmm. You know, you may go there, but that doesn't mean you're going to stay there. So everything can get worked out. So I'm, I'm pleading, you know, stop with all of this, trying to fight, trying to fight officers. And it just... It's, it's, it just never ends good for either either for either party. It just Amen. never ends. It never but you ends know, good. the thing that I like what we're getting out of this is it may sound as though I'm pro police officer or I'm, I'm pro, um, you know, the law. That's not it. It's I want us as a people, and especially young people, to see what we can do right. on our side. We can't control everything that happens, but we can control how we respond to it. Mm -hmm. And that's really what you're telling us have the proper response. When you're pulled exactly. over, it could just be getting a ticket and that's it. No need to flare up, raise your voice, holler, exactly. jump out of the car, say, you know, you, 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 this is a racial thing. Let the courts handle all of that, right? Exactly. So in exactly. closing, is there something else that you can add? Yeah, okay. so even, and even when, when officers have to come to your home, mm -hmm. I notice I see a lot of people, first thing they want to do is record. That's fine, do it. Please do. You're, re you're recording, most officers now have body cams, mm -hmm. you know. If the situation does escalate and that in one of the individuals have to go to jail and he or she is trying to fight the police officers, you got people in the background recording, hollering, you can't do this. All you're doing is making the entire situation worse. Mm. That's all you're doing. I'm telling you all, like, like I said, nobody's going to go to jail and be forgotten. Not, not, not today. Right. You know, 40, 50 years ago. They would take black people to jail. You never see them again, you know. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, you know, you know, people have families. Like you said, they're recording. They'll upload that stuff so fast on social on social media. You won't get left down there if if you were taking improperly. Mm -hmm. You won't get left down there. You won't get left alone. You won't get mixed up in in, in the system. So I think just thing we have to just show respect to each other. You know, if we come to your house, or it's a traffic stop. You know, we both, the police officers and the citizen, we have to respect one another. And I believe if we can just find that respect, but you don't have, you don't have to like mm -hmm. us. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people are going to like us, but show that respect. And I think, I believe that things will get a little bit better. Amen. Now, I know this is a little bit off the, the beaten mm -hmm. path as well, but I just want to mention it. You know, there was a time when the police officers lived in our community. Correct. And that they knew true. the people that they, you know, were, mm -hmm. were, um, Dealing with. Dealing with. Exactly. You know, they at least knew something about them. They yeah. saw them on occasion. Yeah. 
And I think that played a very important role in us having that cohesive community that working together with the officers as well as the citizens. How do you feel about that? Um, I, I totally agree with that. Um, but here's the, here's the caveat to mm -hmm. that, if you will. Um, so you police in a city that you were, or area you were kind of brought up in when you know everybody, you know, you know, Uncle Joe over there, mm -hmm. and you ran a supermarket and you know, right. blah, blah, blah. So, you know, who's this and who's that. But then again, when, when, when trouble comes, then they come knocking on your, on your door. Hey, come help. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. so, you know, so you kind of want to. But well, I, I do say tell them where you live at. Yeah, but, but if they if they know you, <laughs> right. they go, oh, he right. stayed on street, right, right. you know. So so with that being said, I but what we have now is you are correct. We mm -hmm. have a lot of, like I said, men and men and women from completely different walks of life mm -hmm. wanting to be police officers in the inner city. Uh some things you can't train for. Mm -hmm. right. Some things are just you just kind of have to know your surroundings, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but I think not saying that they are being set up for failure, but I think it just takes a little bit more time mm -hmm. of policing in the community yeah. so you can know your community. Yeah. And we all want to live. We all right. want you to get home, make it home safe to your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your friends. Make it home safe. And that's what Ask the Messenger is all about. We, we are saving lives, whether it's dealing with alcoholism, drug abuse, anything that, that um, attacks us as a people. Ask the Messenger is here, and we have messengers. This is a wonderful messenger. David Wilborn of DNL Security, also P Police Deputy Chief, mm -hmm. and we're glad to have you on our show. You've been amazing. Thank you. Hey, we've had an amazing show. I've really enjoyed myself. I was informed. Uh, I really got the information, but the most important thing is, did you get the information? Realize there are some do's and there are some don'ts when it comes to encountering a police officer, especially a traffic stop. We want you to make it home. Make it home to your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friends. Make it home and tell them about the story about how you got pulled over. You might even went to jail, but you made it home safe and now you're going to court to fight your case. Doesn't that sound better than someone telling your mother that you didn't make it home, that you were shot? We don't want to hear that story any longer. We want to hear that you made it home. Help us help you. That's what Ask the Messenger does. We'll be right here once again next week. Um, and I've enjoyed myself as a special guest host. Ask the Messenger, the program that deals with things that help you. We want to help save lives. If you or someone you know is experiencing anything that seems to be too hard to handle, please know there is a way out and don't hesitate or be afraid to seek help. Until next time, may you seek a power greater than yourself so that you too can turn your mess into a message that will help save lives. Continue to stay safe and most importantly, be kind and love one another. Would you like to help us save lives? You can do so by partnering with us here at Ask the Messengers by making a donation of any amount. The people in your communities need your support. Help us extend our reach and impact more lives. Supporting our organization is as easy as a click of a button. Just visit our site shown on the screen from your phone or computer where you will see a yellow donation button. Ask the Messengers is waiting on your partnership and your community is waiting on you.